destroyed and such like that, okay? So let's look at our content. So let's look at our content. First of all, I want to just say that faults are something that are very commonly found in the earth. So I would just jot this down. It's important to understand. You find them all over the earth. It's just very common. Now, what is the force that causes an earthquake to typically build over time? Well, this is the movement of the plates. Remember, we talked about in the last chapter how we have these plate, tectonic plates. And if they're moving, particularly if they're moving side by side, so if this is a plate right here, you know, some continent or whatever, and here's another one, and they're moving past each other, the, 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 the line between them is what the movement's going to take place. And so this is happening all the time. And the pressure builds. It's kind of like this is like glued together, these two pieces. And as these two pieces are glued together, though, eventually the glue, the glue breaks. And, send, and it suddenly will jerk. And as it jerks, it causes the earthquake. And the reason that this, this builds up uh, over time is it's hard to break rocks. Because technically, this black region right here is um, uh, filled with all rocks. And this energy gets dissipated as it, as, it, as, it, uh, as it moves. It may move slowly, but usually it doesn't move. And all of a sudden, there's this pressure, and then boom, it breaks. Okay? Another thing you should understand is that the energy will spread out in all directions from the focus. So wherever that focus is, it's going to spread out in all directions. Up, in three dimensions too. Up, down, sideways, the whole way, all the way through the center of the earth, etc. So it's, it's going to go in all different directions. And interesting enough, that these, these different waves, the three waves we've talked about, you know, sort of four, I don't know, the S, the secondary, actually the primary, the secondary, and then we'll just say the surface, although there's two kinds of surface waves, they all travel at different speeds. And those different speeds actually teach uh, scientists many cool things, which we'll talk about later. And then let's talk about elastic rebound. And I've got a, a clip on elastic rebound. All right. So what the heck is elastic rebound? Elastic rebound is kind of the idea that um, as the pressure builds up over time, like here we have uh, our situation right here, as that elastic, uh, as that pressure builds up, you've got a pressure going in this direction, I can't really draw right on the screen, and a pressure going in this direction, and then that causes the pressure to build up and eventually it'll kind of just come and crash. So let's watch this little video clip here, let's play. Now watch the pressure building up, building up, and it deforms it, and then there's a fault crack. And when it finally does that crack thing, that it just did just there, um, when it finally does that, um, so pressure, 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 that's when you actually have the earthquake. So you, boom, earthquake now. You see when it finally does that, that's the elastic rebound. And you can see how earthquakes are caused by watching this, uh, we'll do it one more time. There we go. Pressure, 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 pressure. Crap! Earthquake. You get the idea? Okay. And the next topic is something called shear strength. Shear strength? What's that? Well, the idea is that as time goes on, as, as there's strain, you see we've got a situation where we have um, on a fault zone, or a fault line, we have them going in opposite direction. So the stress, as you, there's strain and stress. And so as time goes on, there gets more and more stress built on those rocks. And what happens is, is they have a failure. So all of a sudden, this right here would be an earthquake. It builds up and boom, it comes down. Now, um, the strength of the rock depends upon the type of rock. Some rocks are stronger than others, and they will fail at some point. And that's when the earthquake takes place. And so eventually what's going to happen, and who knows where on this curve it will happen. Depends, of course, on the rocks in that particular portion of the world. Boom. They'll fall. And so like in Haiti, I don't know what, maybe the sheer strength had been very, very strong. And of course, when, if it falls from up here, you get a more powerful earthquake than if it falls down here. Technically, it's actually better to have weak rocks in your neighborhood, if you will, if you're near an earthquake type prone zone, because then you'll have lots of little earthquakes instead of just one or two big ones. The big ones, of course, are much more damaging. Lots of little ones relieve that pressure, relieve that stress. Okay. Now we have one more topic. And you know what I'm going to do on this particular topic? I'm going to turn this over to our, our guest teachers, Mr. and Mrs. Mosier. They're going to talk about what a fault scarp is. And uh, we'll see you. Yeah, we'll turn it over to them and see what they have to say. Okay, and the last piece is fault scarps. And just a couple of photos of different fault scarps. In that animation between the focus and the epicenter, you notice that Mr. Mo pointed out a number of times that one of the blocks was slipping down. Well, this top picture up here, this is from the Alaska 1964 earthquake. And you can see where the land surface is, where the scientist is standing. That's the new land area that got exposed. So that's 
10 feet tall, yeah, 10 foot foot probably. scarp. That's a lot of ground motion that happened in one earthquake, and that happened over a very, very large area in Alaska. We'll look more at that earthquake as we go through. This whole part right here just kind of dropped, and this part went up, but relative to each other, one whole side of it just dropped straight down. Um, the bottom picture you can see um, guy walking out in the field. These are scientists out here exploring. But you can see that bottom solid line up to the top line that has the tick marks on it showing you it's going down. That's a fault scarp there. So yep. it's just slipped right there. Slipped four right or five down. feet tall. Um, and again, that's a fault scarp. And then probably the one that makes a little bit more sense to you, um, there's a track. We've all Whoa. seen tracks. They don't go like that. The bottom dropped out of my track. And that's exactly what a fault scarp is. As a block moves down relative to another, you can sometimes see these features in the ground. Okay. Old ground surface used to be used to be level. And now this whole it's thing not. now is where it slipped down the hill. And that, my friends, is it. We are done for uh, today's lesson. We will see you in class.